Video games have evolved into a billion dollar industry, but we can't forget how it all began. So today on Mahalo Daily, we're taking you back to the classic arcade. If you were born after 1970, then you probably grew up playing games like Galaga, Pac-Man, Centipede, and Donkey Kong. 37 years have passed since the first ever coin-operated game, Computer Space, debuted. But it wasn't until the release of Atari's arcade version of table tennis simulator, Pong, that video gaming became a national obsession. Despite advancements in graphics and gameplay, many gamers still enjoy revisiting the old classics, which are available on modern systems like the Xbox 360 and the Nintendo Wii. Would you like to tell me what your favorite classic arcade video game is? I would have to say Pac-Man or Ms. Pac-Man. She's got a bow. Super Donkey Kong. It had to be uh, Galaga. Man, I gotta say maybe Defender. Was there the one called Zaxxon? You know what else? Berserk. I'm trying to think. It's so hard to choose. Probably Centipede. Galaga, why? Because my dad, that was the first video game I ever played with my dad. It's the best game because you get to get points by eating. I don't know, just the challenge of it. I remember the day on Christmas my parents got me a black and white TV and an Atari. And I was like doing work on Berserk, like for weeks. To learn more about why people still love to play the classic games, Mahalo Daily's very own Lon Harris talked to a few game enthusiasts. I've got Ross here from Joystick. Now you're saying you're a little young to remember the classic days of like stand up arcade games. Yeah. So I hear there's this guy, um, Bebert? Bebert, is that right? Cubert. Cubert! It's alright, yeah. Oh. Let me tell you. Tetris was my big thing. I played that thing like crazy. I'm gonna have to go with Joust. Joust was a good game, yeah. I mean, and Paperboy. Paperboy. Paperboy was, was my that was hard. So that's it here from us at the Joystick Mahalo mashup. This party's gonna be going strong all night, or at least until the Pringles and Mountain Dew run out. So back to you at Twist Up, Leah. You can't talk classic video games without talking to a classic video game record holder. So I found Donkey Kong champion Steve Wiebe, who you may know from the 2007 documentary King of Kong, A Fistful of Quarters, right here in Santa Monica to get his take on the classics. Donkey Kong was a favorite of mine when I was a kid growing up in the arcades when I was 12 years old. And then in the late 80s, um, after the arcades had phased out, I bought a Donkey Kong machine and when I was in college I put it in my fraternity and that's where I got pretty good at the game. And then it, I put it away for another 10 years and then this another in year 2000 I was thinking about what the record was and I looked it up on the internet and I saw that it was within my reach so I went and bought another Donkey Kong machine that I had sold my other one and then I got the record it took me only a few months to get back into it. Now what is it about Donkey Kong that you like the most? Well, why didn't you go out to be um, you know Galaga champion? Yeah. Well Galaga is a good game and I before Donkey Kong I liked Pac-Man but when Donkey Kong came out they had the four screens in the same game it was like four different games in one and the, the graphics were a lot better than Pac-Man, and the music and everything was pretty captivating at the time, so it just kind of drew me into it. What do you think it is about the games from the 80s that people like so much? Well, the games from the 80s are the more seminal kind of games. They're like the root of gaming. They have the most perfect like game strategies, and because of that, they're gonna be eternal. In fact, 200 years from now, people will still be playing Donkey Kong and Centipede and Tempest and Frogger because they're so pure in their, in their gaming quality. Whereas many, 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 many games nowadays, they have all that churning noise and all that churning stuff. It's all that graphic stuff. So the gameplay is actually covered over by all the churning graphics. And the gameplay really is not that deep, nor that developed, nor that profound. So therefore, a person could learn how to play a modern game in just a matter of maybe 20, 40, 50 hours. But the old games, you can play them for years before you get that perfect score on Pac-Man. It just so happens that the day we were with Steve, he was going to try and reclaim his Donkey Kong world record. What's your strategy tonight to break the record? Well, I'm going to start off, just get my groove going, a little conservative, and then ramp up um, going, going for it when I hit, you know, maybe 100,000 or so when I've got past the preliminary boards and then see what happens from there. I get maybe one or two games. So the chances are, you know, it's, there's a chance, but it's, when you're only given two games, it's going to be harder to get, get, a, get a record. But I'm just going to see what happens and play it from there. And what's the score you have to beat? Uh, 1,050,200 that Billy Mitchell holds right now. 
Well, it's been about an hour and he's still playing. I guess these old games take a lot of patience. Tell us what your favorite video game is by leaving us a comment. For more information, go to mahalo.com slash video games. So no matter how advanced video games get today, there's still something very special about playing the classics. If you like what you saw here today, be sure to rate and subscribe to our videos on YouTube. For Mahalo Daily, I'm Leah D'Amelio. We'll see you next time.